port of Liverpool was a major slaving port and merchants dominated slave trade in the second half of the 18th century. It is believed that the trade was the backbone of Liverpool's prosperity. So my family come from two parts. My mum's side comes from Trinidad and Tobago, but my dad's side actually comes from Africa. There were, in, I suppose, there are rumours of when people get brought over on the ships, there were a lot of slave owners where their people went missing. And it was also known that rituals would have been used on people that they just thought was proper. So I suppose that could link to the fact that Liverpool was an importer for slave trading. And you've got so many satanic rituals that did take place here. You know, witchcraft, occult practices. Some of my family members very well may have been included in that. In 1807, the slave trade was abolished and the wealth acquired gave stimulus to the industrial development throughout the entire northwest of England. <laughs> we enter this world knowing only life, yet death awaits us all. Using some of the most up-to-date scientific equipment, we endeavour to gather evidence that there is life after death. These are our investigations into the mysterious world of the paranormal. Whatever you have seen, whatever you have felt, Whatever you believe, there is more to this world. There is the ghost dimension. Tonight we venture deep into an area in the heart of Liverpool, which started its life as a quarry in the 16th century, and is now home to the largest amount of paranormal sightings that we have ever encountered. And welcome. We are literally walking amongst the dead tonight as we investigate one of the most haunted cemeteries in Liverpool. This is St James's Cemetery and this is Ghost Dimension. In the early 1800s it was a quarry where they used to quarry stone from here and in the late 1900s it got turned into a cemetery uh, Mr. John Foster came down and actually designed the cemetery and Mr. John Foster himself is actually buried in the cemetery. At the time when they used to bury the people in the catacombs, it was five pounds to get buried in there. But they go 120 foot underground and these 40 um, sides to each catacomb. Originally the land here started out as a quarry back in the 16th century and supplied stone for some of the magnificent buildings that still stand proud here in the city of Liverpool. By the year 1825, the useful stone from the quarry had been exhausted, and it was left to the town council to decide what was to be done with this huge scar left in the town. In 1829, Liverpool's new cemetery was consecrated by Dr Sumner and the Bishop of Diocese and the first interment took place. The final burial was in 1936, and then the cemetery was closed as it was considered to be full. The list of residents here is phenomenal and ranges from a sea captain stabbed to death in suspicious circumstances in the Bay of Biscay to a simple serving girl. So I study civil engineering at university and with that, I suppose over time I've got a more understanding of how buildings work. So I understand why some floors might creak, while pipes might rattle. But there's still those odd occurrences where it's just like, you've got no reasoning behind that. And that's where you'd need to be digging into a bit more detail around those. Over on the left hand side here, it's um, called Mount Zion. Um, there used to be a witch cult here called the Wiccans. It was run by a head witch called Jenna Green. And if you look on the mount itself, there's all the carvings from the time there uh, in the stone. And it, you're just directly behind me here is supposed to be where Jenna Green's buried. 
If you go down here to, to, to uh, the walkway, to the very end of this uh, the walkway here, past um, William Muskinskin's tomb, on the uh, far left-hand side, you've got um, an Ed Vampire, um, believed to be um, buried in Everton Road. Uh, St. Domingo Road, years ago in the 1600s, there was a farm, and um, there was a police officer passing the farm, and what happened was he heard all kinds of commotion going on. So he looked through the farm window, and what it was is it was all jars on the, um, the shelves with body parts in them. And it was found to be that he'd murdered two wives and he used to drink the blood. And he was just about to murder his third wife. And um, he got lynched by a lynch mob with, with the uh, police officer. And he actually stuck a stake in his heart and he got buried in Rupert Lane face down. Well, going back um, later on then to the 19th century, excavations of the road became. Uh, and when they, when they excavated the road, they found this vampire. So he was actually buried in the Sem at the end here. But this part of the Sem is not a consecrated ground. It wasn't the Sem at that time. So he's down there and his wives are on the other side. When you walk down that way, you'll smell all the garlic on the, uh, the, the opposite side of where the vampire's buried. The garlic there is significant to stop the um, Ed Vampire apparently entering over to his wives on the opposite side of the uh, walkway. Satanic rituals. Yeah, they could have taken place. You have, you have witchcraft, you have occult practices. Is, I don't know if that means that this place is haunted. I suppose, you know, people believe that spirits feed off of energy. So that very well, that could very well be the reason behind these disturbances. I just hope and pray that those dimensions stay safe during their investigation. Although a cemetery is thought to be the least of haunted places, this one has had many reports of ghostly activity since before it even became a cemetery. A woman in black who dates from the Victorian or Edwardian era has also been seen gliding towards a tomb. It was ransacked by grave robbers in the 1970s. People have reported seeing the limp inspector and William Hoskisson leaving his grand mausoleum where his remains were laid to rest in 1830 after he was run over by George Stevenson's rocket locomotive. There are hundreds of children buried here who worked and died in local workhouses, many of whom would have been orphans with no one to mourn their tragic passing. I was here a couple of weeks ago and some lady pulled me up and she said to me, you're a photographer? And I said, yeah, well, I do photography. I said, I'm a paranormal investigator. She said, well, I was walking through here the other night. It was quite dusk. And she said, um, there was children jumping around in here, little children holding hands. They were dressed in like chimney sweep outfits and crinoline dresses, the girls. She said, she, they were bending down, stroking the dog. And um, what happened was, she said, I turned round to start speaking to them and they disappeared. There's also, to the left-hand side over here by the catacombs, we have a little girl here, a six-year-old girl. Um, and she was born into a, um, a very wealthy family and her mother was poor. And what happened was, her mother had that many children, she couldn't look after her. And up on the top, in the big white house, Gambia Terrace, is where her dad was. Her dad was a very wealthy person. And her little Grace used to play down the cemetery. And what happened was, she contracted pneumonia and died in her sleep. So when her dad come home and the servants told him, he didn't want anyone to know, and he, he paid the servants off to not say anything. And he told everyone that he'd gone to live down south. So what happened was, he came down and seen the, uh, the ranger in here and said, can we bury her somewhere on, on an unmarked grave? So what happened was, they, they put her in a grave over here on the left-hand side, and she apparently entombed in the wall. So a local medium was down here visiting the sem one day, and he heard this crying, and he turned round. Little girl was here in a white dress, long blonde hair, sitting there. And what happened was, he went over and said, what are you doing down here on your own? And she went, I'm Gracie, and I've, I've been buried in the semi here, and no one comes to see me. So she actually told him and showed the medium where the house was. So he went up to her dad and he said he was going to report him, that he had to do something about it. Nothing got done. So the medium actually come down with a gentleman and they carved little Gracie's name in the stone. And then uh, ever since, people have seen little Gracie roam in the sem of a night. It always affects us deeply when we encounter the spirits of children still residing this earthly plane. And we pray for little Grace, that one day she finds her way home. St. James's is the most haunted cemetery in the UK. There's a lot of activity in here, especially of a night. 
uh, dust times. We, we have had a lot of activities in here. So do the dead really rest in peace here? Or are a few determined to resist the afterlife and continue to mix among the living? By the time we finish tonight, we shall ensure to leave them in peace. Tonight, we prepare to investigate St. James's Cemetery, claimed to be the UK's most haunted. And with so many varied reports of paranormal activity, what will we encounter tonight? St. James's Cemetery. Heart of Liverpool, right in the centre. And a first for GD. You wouldn't believe this is a public park now. So many bodies buried here. 58,000 to be exact. 58,000 of them. Now, we're, we know there's a lot of myths and legends mm -hmm. surrounding this place. There's fairies, there's vampires, witches. Not to mention the orphans that are buried here. Yeah. Nobody to mourn their death. You know, that's quite tragic and it just, it sends out Sadness everywhere, doesn't it? And you walk around the place and you think, it's beautiful. And you wonder why these spirits are not gone over, why crossed not over. Rest? Yeah, why their souls still wander. Is it because they're looking for the mother or father or the witches? Who Something knows? to do, you know, who knows, yeah. In the daytime, even though it's a public park, it has this eerie feel about it. it yeah, I agree with that, it does. And I'm wondering, will the people that wander this park in the day, are they brave enough to make an appearance in the evening? Yeah, exactly, are they? As some of the reports that people are witnessing here, people are just walking through the park. What if there's something more sinister in this park tonight? You know, we've got vampires and witches, we could be dealing with something a bit more edgy. We could be. Maybe there's more to this park than what it lets on. Maybe there's something strange going on that people have conjured up here. Exactly, and I think it's our job tonight to try and find, find out what we're, what, what we're looking for, what's haunting the cemetery. Let's, let's go and get the gear. Let's get it, let's wait for it to go dark because there'll be less people here to interfere. Yeah. And let's find out what really is going on here. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. With so many reports of activity at this cemetery, will the Ghost Dimension team encounter any of the acclaimed spirits tonight? We've arrived. Yep, St. James's Cemetery. It's freezing cold, it's too dark. It's gonna be good, isn't it? It's I don't wanna go home. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> feels really it eerie. Does, yeah. Really eerie. How are you feeling, Paul? We're just on a streak so far. I'm <laughs> waiting to get into the cemetery. That's when it's gonna get eerie. Well, let's get sure. it on. Let's get the gear out, let's get inside, and let's find some spirits. I've been given the task um, of coming and doing my lone vigil first. Um, it's really eerie because St. James's Cemetery is massive, really is massive. We've got orphans here, we've got mums, we've got dads, we've got vampires behind me, buried behind me. Hello? <coughs> Sorry, oh god. Okay, um, there was a growl. I, I'm going to spin you round. What the f Something's over there. Hello? Anybody there? We are in part of the cemetery where it's believed that the Green Teeth Witch, so her name was Green Teeth. Jenny Green Teeth. Jenny Green Teeth. She is buried down here. She was not a nice witch. Um, so maybe we'll make contact. We've got the Rem. We're going to head over to where Bex felt the presence earlier. Yeah, she felt like somebody she was did. behind, didn't she? Jumping. Jumping. During filming earlier, after Bex completed her piece to camera, she felt a presence behind her. Many of whom would have been orphans with no one to mourn their tragic passing. 
Someone's behind me. I, I kid you not. Somebody went behind me. There. Would we encounter the same presence as we continued our investigation in the exact same area? So it's more like a, a public park kind of place. And it's right next to Liverpool Cathedral, which is just there, standing quite magnificently over the city of Liverpool. So, travelling a little bit light tonight with equipment, I'm just next to this grave and we've got one rem just sat on there to see if anything's going to happen. Lots and lots of reports of different things that happen here. Um, you see, it's, it's really awkward to tell what's what sometimes because it's it, it is literally um, not far from a main road so hearing things is a little bit uh, tricky because you don't know whether it, you're hearing something that's down here or up there oh I don't I really really don't like this I've got a REM pod by the way over here um, I really hope that doesn't go off. It's so dark. I may put my torch on because I'm really, really scared. Oh God, whistling now, whistling. I can hear whistling. I'm doing a span of the cemetery. Okay. I'm not doing a span of the cemetery because there was somebody behind me. Is that somebody up there? I can't believe it. I'm one minute in and already I'm really, really scared. I'm going to just try and brave it out and go over by the REM pod. The REM pod is over here. You can just see the little light over there. This is where the grave is vampire grave so I'm just gonna stand here oh, it's a bin it's a bin bex calm down if there's any spirit presence here did you just hear that what did you hear moaning noise Whew. did you hear that from in there tapping yeah. let's just go over there's no rats on the floor in here now no. Is anybody here? No way. It's not raining. Yeah, it's not raining. That's weird. Well, it, That's it? really weird. Already. This noise is coming from inside. That's like someone's walking in there. We've got to be getting that noise. And they'll get that because of the, the brambles. Yeah. What the hell? Hello, is anybody here? No way. Yeah, 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 yeah. We both could hear tapping noises. And when Jane asked if anyone was there, we caught the following sound on the camera audio, which appears to have been caught when I was also speaking earlier. There's no rats on the floor in here now. There's no rats on the floor in here now. Hello, is anybody here? Hello, is anybody here? Could this sound be caused by the soul of a witch from the cult, the Wiccans? If so, was she using occult magic or spiritual energy in an attempt to manifest? Oh no, it's a bit of a morbid thing but a lot of people like to have a look at headstones and what have you there's a, a ton of those here that you could spend a whole day just walking around and reading the, their epitaphs and what have you okay did just see somebody 
just down there. I'm just going to increase the IR, see if it makes a difference. But I just saw somebody, more or less, with my finger around that area. I just saw a dark, dark shape. Yeah, you don't have to show yourself if you don't wish to, but if you can give me some sign, maybe a, a, a vocal of some sort, a whistle. This is just truly, truly frightening. I've, I can honestly say it's one of the most terrifying investigation I've done. I think it's a lot to do with mind over matter, maybe, because we are in a graveyard. And you know there's bodies been laid to rest. Um, hello? Anybody out there? Oh, oh God. I'm whistling, whistling, whistling. Okay, so I called for anybody out there and um, it's this way, behind me here. It, ooh. What was that? It sounded like, I mean, if it looked like somebody was beside me. Black figure, I really don't like it anymore. I really, really don't like it, I'm really scared. We don't mean you no harm. Just want to communicate with you. Whoa, did you touch that, Jane? No, 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 no. Here, man. Right, look, we'll ask again, right? If you dare, make a noise, give us a sound. If that was you that tapped on there, tap on it again. <gasps> uh, yeah, I heard that. Whoa, and I heard that as well. Where the hell is that? Do you hear that, Jay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's the rem? Do you not stand on that? Get away from there. Uh, that, that's I don't, freaky. I don't want to don't put that, my back against it. There is something in there, and it's powerful. Yeah. Something like... Um, like it spatters us. No, no. Like that. Oh, no, God. Yeah? Something appeared to be lurking around the whole crew at St. James's Cemetery. And it wasn't surprising, with the tens and thousands of human remains buried beneath our feet. But there was also an air that something else was here, and we could all feel its strong, unwelcoming energy. Uh, we was in here one night, and I was in here with my group. And what we'd done is, like, put the spirit boards out, and we had three people to a spirit board. And what happened was, um, we had we had two two people doing the spirit board and one actually writing down what was coming through. We got three gentlemen through on this tree, in the middle on the Y-shaped tree, saying that they've been uh, hung for murder here. We got a fourth gentleman coming through saying he shouldn't be here with the gentleman, that he'd been hung for robbing and stealing a, ro a loaf of bread. Was the presence of these murderous men that had been summoned using the Ouija board the energy that we could all feel around us soaking into the atmosphere. Okay, so my second um, lone vigil. I've had a break and I've come back and I decided to choose this area with the massive cathedral, which is beautiful, the backdrop. And I was setting up my REM pod, which is over there. And just before I pressed record, a massive blue light, the blue light which is always on it, it shone really, really bright and then went off. So something is over there and reacting already. Um, yeah, I'll just pan it round, show you what I'm actually dealing with and where I am, if you can see it, it's really blurred. Uh, let's take it away from the lights. Okay. So let's go up to the cathedral because it's, it's not finding its focus. Right, there we go. So, I have a row of graves. 
here. A massive ovulus that. Um, what the hell was that? It's not an obvious, it's a pinnacle over there that the rem is on. Um, it's, it's so scary here because you've got the trees and it's just grand. It really is a grand cemetery. Can you affect my meter over there, please? Oh, oh deary me. Did you hear that? Almost instantly, as Bex began her investigation, she caught what appears to be a disembodied groan in the distance. Can you affect my meter over there, please? Oh, oh deary me. Did you hear that? Can you affect my meter over there, please? Oh, oh deary me. Did you hear that? Was this groan from one of the men hung here? Or was something more dark lurking in the shadows? Good luck to Bex, yeah. on her own brave oh, in it. Gosh. She's brave. She's one brave woman. She is. Absolutely, I wouldn't do it on my own. I know, she's got balls of steel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And she's gonna need them. She's gonna she's need them. I mean, now we're heading towards, we're bumping into each other because you can't see where you're going, it's dark. <laughs> it's like in a crevasse, but um, let's check where we're going. We're going towards now. Um, some, look at this, these catacombs. Wow. You know these these tombs built inside of the rock. And there's one which is, just gives you this weird feel, doesn't it? What's that smell? It's weird. What is that smell? The smell is very very strong, isn't it? Yeah, it stinks, doesn't it? What have we got here? You can smell garlic. I smell garlic. Now the weird thing about you saying that, Jay, this place has got dark in different parts because it's believed it's a vampire here. Wow. Yeah. You can smell garlic. Really you can really smell strong, it. Yeah. But it's wild garlic that's around, and it grows normally in different places, but it's here apparently to protect. Now, <clears throat> in this area, there's supposed to be. A witch called Jenny or Ginny Greenteeth. And uh, as you can see, lots more graves and headstones. There's that. Oh, I just heard what sounded like my name called. That was a bit, uh, a little bit weird then, I could have sworn. Just heard my name called. Yeah, I'm gonna spin this round on me again because it's, uh, it's so hard to, to uh, see. If I just hold it like this, maybe you could see something. Uh, Hello? Can you give me a name? A reason why you passed? A reason why you were buried in the cemetery? <gasps> Whoa! Hello? Someone said hello? Hello? I had just heard a voice that chilled me instantly to the bones, as it was so clear. And I believe it said, hello. <gasps> Whoa! Whatever the entity was, it was clear that it knew I was here. I just prayed for my own safety. It was not a murderous soul, and perhaps the spirit Keith had mentioned earlier had been hung for the wrong crime. We got a fourth gentleman coming through saying he shouldn't be here with the gentleman that he'd be unhung for robbing or stealing a loaf of bread. With the activity now increasing, St James's Cemetery is living up to its claim of the UK's most haunted. These are some of the weirdest things we've ever investigated on the show. I've never seen anything like this, I've never... 
never encountered anything like this. Not not built into the brick anyway, nothing. No. And is anybody over there, Jane? Did you hear that? I just heard like a scratching. Like somebody was walking oh, through the leaves? Yeah. Oh, it's come from there. Tappity tap tap. Yeah. Hello? Is anybody here? Are you a man or a girl? A boy or a child? Can you come to say hello? Yeah. Let me turn this. If there's anybody that would like to communicate with us, come and speak to us. Come and let us know you're here. There's a device on the floor called a REM pod. If you come towards it, it will alarm and it will give us an indication of your presence. I just want to come over here. I'm not sure why that's gated. Don't know what that could have been at any point. Okay, I've just heard two, two little noises. I can't see where they could have come from. That was a little bit weird. Noise over here. It's like people in this spirit, in this cemetery are leading me on a wild goose chase. It's like... <coughs> what the f*** was that? What was that? That was like the worst sound I've ever heard. That was like a scream, a shout, a, somebody in pain. I can't describe what that was, but it was terrifying. I don't want to put my back towards this. It was terrifying. I am terrified. I can't wait to meet up with the others because my heart is just gone, shattered. I'm just so scared right now. Was that you, Jenny? Is that how you spent your final days screaming? Can you tell me your name? That's what steps from where from. You can hear footsteps moving, but I can't see anybody. Just heard footsteps around here somewhere. I'd like somebody walking up on me, but I can't see anybody. I can hear it still though. Oh, I hope the audio is picking this up because otherwise I'm going to think I'm going bloody crazy. But I can hear what sounds like somebody walking just around here. And I saw the black shadow. Is that your name, Pat? Ghost Dimension. There are literally thousands of souls resting at this location. Some good and some not so. And we are about to come face to face with one of these entities. I appreciate every single thing you're doing for me. This is actually a better spot. It's night, it does actually feel not too bad, not nice. I was gonna say nice, but it's not nice. It's still scary. Um, but there's a lot of light um, and open ground. And that's why it feels a little bit better. Uh, however, I do think I've connected with definitely a male. Don't know what his name is, and Jenny. Uh, I definitely think Jenny's here communicating with me because every time I say Jenny, 
I get a response via I don't know creaks and knocks and stuff and some woman's voice I heard before. This is the most haunted cemetery in the world and with over 58,000 bodies buried here there should be somebody that can come out and communicate with us and show us you're here. Did you hear that noise? Yeah, what did you hear? I heard like a moaning noise. Yeah, like that's exactly moaning. what I just heard. That's, it's weird. Can you come and speak to us? Maybe they're trying to warn us, Sean. Maybe. I've just got this, Well, sorry Jane. Weird feeling that we shouldn't be messing too much. Ooh. I heard that. Yeah. I heard Did you hear that? I did hear that. I, I something just right. grabbed my neck. Can you see anything on my neck? Yeah. It was right, where are you? There, right there. Oh, you've got a red mark on where? your neck. No, that's not me. Right, let me just flick this off the infrared, just so we can see this. One second. I, I felt like something sharp attacked me. Oh, wow. What is it? Wow. Is it bad? Look at that. It's nail marks in your neck. Nail marks? Yeah, whoa. That's very red, Sean. I, I felt How it, Jane. you felt it? it? But it looks like you've got three finger... Three... Oh, there's a three lines there. Three? Three. Three? Three lines on your neck. Three? Yeah, three. That's not a good number, Jane. That's yeah. not a nice number. Something had just attacked me, and there was three long red scratches on my neck. I do not know what this entity was, but it was obviously not friendly. There was also scratch marks on the trees, which we could not see until a white light was on. Perhaps these marks are a warning to stay well away from this particular set of catacombs. There's something attacking us here. Look at the tree. I've just noticed what's oh in the tree. Oh my god, yeah. What's a claw mark? It's a claw tree. mark in the tree. And where am I stood? Boom. Look at that tree. Is this a significant oh thing? God, yeah. Claw marks in the trees, Jane. What the hell? All by here. All by this tomb. This tomb here. But people, somebody must have been incarcerated. Sean, do you know what I'm thinking? What are you, you thinking? Know when I said to you about the smell of garlic, and you'd said about a vampire. Yeah. Your neck. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yes. Very a vampire, so. maybe a vampire. Yeah. I do. I don't believe in vampires. So how do you get the marks on your neck then? I don't know. Perhaps Jane was correct, and the story of the vampire buried here is true, and his restless soul is the one responsible for the marks on my neck. Whatever the case, it was time to join forces as a team, and to ensure no one else suffered the same wrath. Ghost Dimension. Oh, the lights of the monastery have gone off. Is that late? That's how late it is, this investigation. It's um, cold, isn't it? And it's getting dark. Yeah. Here. We're having technical problems. We'll, we'll go over while Paul's trying to fix yeah, the SLS. Okay. Right. The, the, it's not worked. Since we've come in here, no. we've constantly had problems yeah. with the Different. equipment that we've got. Nothing is working. Let's just go over to the uh, mausoleum. Over by the mausoleum, we've got a REM pod. And that is by the front door. And hopefully, what it's going to do, here comes Paul, is... Hey, watch this lip. Hopefully, what it's going to do is if anybody comes through here, it's going to sense them and pick them up. There it is right there. Paul's setting up. Have you got it working? I've got the SLS working, Paul. Going, yeah. Excellent. So we've got the SLS going. <coughs> Shall we call out and see if we can get somebody? Yeah. Let's, you know what, point it straight in there, Paul. Let's see if we can get somebody in there. Does anybody here? Can you come forward, come and speak to us? Come and communicate? Let us know you're here. Show yourself on the camera device we've got. 
walk forward or touch one of us. Hear that? Okay, you hear? a man's voice. You hear a man's voice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a groan. That, that was footsteps behind us. Did you hear? I heard that. Hear that. Yeah, that was really, really loud. Are we getting anything on the camera, Paul? Not yet. Do you res. Do you hear it? There's a lot of voices there. There's nobody around now. It's that dark around here. Do we think it's drawing a blank in there, or we? Well, I can't really get through the, the what bars. Was, did you feel that on the floor? The vibration yeah, on the oh, floor? Oh, there's, Whoa, there's something on somebody. the camera. And he's inside there. He's actually inside that mausoleum. Oh, my God. Amazingly, we appear to have caught a spirit entity inside of the mausoleum. Was this one of the entities that had been around the team throughout the night? Or indeed, was it William Huskisson? himself still attached to the remains inside of the building. If he's shown himself in front of us, yeah. there may be more spirits behind us. This is you, William Huskisson. Can you raise your right arm? Oh, he just raised his arm. No way. His arm just went Let's up. Let's consider it again. Could you do that again for me? There you go, just went up there. You I go. just saw that, no Thank way. Thank you. Are you not at rest in this mausoleum? Would you like to come out and go for a walk? He's gone. He's gone? He's gone? Yeah. He's gone. Maybe he's come out. Maybe he's come out. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Let's back up a bit and see if we can see him. Oh, there. Where? He was just in the corner then for a split second. He was just there. See if I can back up a little bit and see if he's. Whoa! Did you hear that? that came from straight in there. Hello. Yeah, that was a voice from was in very there. Clear. Is that you, Mr. Huskisson? Did you just say hello? Would you like us to leave? Would you like us to leave this place? Are you here? Sadly, the spirit person did not return. But still, to this very day, we believe perhaps William made a very brief appearance on our investigation. And hopefully, it won't be the last he ever makes. St. James's Cemetery certainly lived up to its claims tonight, and we are certain that this could be one of the most haunted cemeteries in the world. Multiple spirits appear to be haunting here, and it's clear this location needs further investigation.